Hey, hey artists, welcome to another video. Today, we are gonna be talking about the dark side of being an artist online. So while the internet has created new opportunities for artists to showcase their work and connect with fans, it has also exposed them to our huge range of challenges and difficulties. So while being an artist online can be a wonderful way to showcase your work and get your artwork out there, it does have that dark side. So whether you are an emerging artist just starting out or a seasoned professional looking to navigate that ever evolving landscape of the internet, this video might be for you. So let's get started. The first thing, first dark side I wanted to talk about is the pressure to constantly create and produce new content. So being an artist online, it often comes with that expectation that you are going to constantly produce new and engaging content for your audience. This pressure can come from a variety of sources, including social media platforms, audience, and competition with other artists. So for instance, on social media platforms, algorithms tend to prioritize content that is new and engaging. This means that in order to stay visible and relevant, artists may feel that need to produce new content on a regular basis. And audience feedback can also help to create that pressure as well, constantly wanting to see new work. And while that positive feedback of them wanting to see new work can be encouraging, it could also create that sense of obligation to keep creating that content and sometimes it comes at the sacrifice of quality and creativity and ultimately artist happiness. Competition with other artists can also contribute to this. Social media allows us to always have a huge, huge roster of artists at our fingertips that we can constantly use for inspiration. But it also means that us artists are constantly competing for attention and recognition. And this can create a sense of urgency to keep producing that new, engaging, innovative work in order to be able to stand out. The pressure to constantly create that new content, it can be so overwhelming and it can lead to burnout, stress, anxiety, you know, all that stuff that we want to try and minimize in our lives. And it can also lead to a decrease in the quality of work being produced. Artists might feel rushed or forced to create work that doesn't actually align with their personal vision or style. So to ease this pressure that we might feel, it's really important for artists to set realistic goals for themselves and also to prioritize their well-being over the pressure to constantly create new work and appease the algorithm. This might mean taking more breaks or experimenting with new styles or mediums or even seeking support from other artists. It's really, really important for artists to remember that quality is more important than quantity and that taking that time to create work that is meaningful and authentic to you as the artist is ultimately going to be way more rewarding than producing work just to simply keep up with the demands of social media or the algorithms. So the second dark side of being an artist online that I wanted to talk about is comparisonitis and imposter syndrome. So being an artist online, it can expose you to a huge community of other artists, both established and emerging. And while this can be super inspiring and very motivating, it also can create a sense of constant comparison and competition. Comparisonitis. <laughs> it's so easy to fall into that trap of comparing your work to others and when you do that, it tends to lead to feelings of inadequacy, self-doubt, and imposter syndrome. When an artist sees others' work, and especially success, we all know that social media tends to be more of a highlight reel. So of course, people want to highlight their successes. But when that's what you see, 
it can lead to feelings of being an imposter or a fraud in your own artwork, even if you did work really hard to get where you are. And that comparison trap, it can also create pressure to conform to trends or styles that you might not necessarily like, but you might feel the pressure to do them anyways because they appear to be getting views. This can end up leading to a lack of authenticity in your work. And the thing that I find the most painful about that is it tends to lead to a sense of dissatisfaction and a lack of fulfillment in your art practice. It can also make it really difficult for an artist to find their unique voice because they might be constantly comparing themselves to others and subconsciously trying to mimic what other people are doing. So that being said, it is so important for artists to recognize that every artist has their own unique journey and creative process. And it's also helpful to limit that exposure to social media and other platforms where you find that comparisonitis the strongest and instead focus on creating work that is authentic and true to yourself. You could also seek support from other artists that are struggling with this and work to build a community that is very supportive while still maintaining your own unique voice. So the next dark side is trolls and hate comments. Ugh, I hate that this basically just comes with the territory of being an artist or really anyone online these days, but it seems to be the reality. Unfortunately, being an artist online, it can expose you to a range of negative comments, hate speech, and trolling behavior. And it you know, goes without saying that this can be incredibly damaging to an artist's mental health and their well-being, as well as their creative process. The impact of trolls and hate comments can be super significant if you let it be. They can cause artists to doubt their creative abilities or feel discouraged or demotivated and even lead to stronger feelings of depression and anxiety. You might develop a fear of putting artwork online and that can be really damaging. To cope with those trolls and hate comments is really important for artists to establish boundaries and to prioritize their mental health. This could mean a bunch of different things. This can mean limiting exposure to negative comments. If it gets really bad, you can disable comments altogether or just avoid reading them potentially. It's also important to seek support from people that you know love you and support you. And the thing that has personally worked for me a lot is to remember that those hateful comments, they're a reflection of the person who wrote them not you or your artwork. Artists can also seek out communities of like-minded individuals and you can support and uplift each other. And that can provide a really safe space for that creativity and self-expression that we all crave. And finally, the last dark side of being an artist online that I wanted to talk about is exploitation and copyright infringement. Being an artist online will expose you to these things. I still remember the first time many years ago that I used a reverse image search on my artwork just to see if anyone was stealing or exploiting my work. And what I found shocked me to my core. There was so much that I couldn't do anything about it. And it was really, really eye-opening. Copyright infringement can be a really serious issue for artists online. In today's digital age, it's so easy for individuals to share, or copy, or distribute an artist's work without their permission or knowledge, or potentially even use it in a way that can hurt that artist's reputation or brand. And with the recent upsurge of using AI for artwork, this has been a whole new level of concern for artists and creatives. So one of the dark sides of being an artist online is that we are being forced to navigate this in a new way that we haven't really had to deal with before. So there you have it. Those are a couple things, couple ways that 
you know, there are dark sides of being an artist online. While we've explored some of the challenges and difficulties that artists can face in this digital age, it is so important to remember that there is still a flip side to this coin. The internet has created unprecedented opportunities for artists to showcase their work, could reach new audiences around the globe and connect with fans from anywhere. By leveraging that power of social media and digital platforms, artists can build vibrant communities of like-minded individuals who support and uplift each other. It could be an absolutely amazing thing. You could use those platforms to advocate for social justice and positive change in this world. So while it is really important to acknowledge and address that there are challenges of being an artist online, it is equally important to recognize that there are amazing positive impacts that this digital world can have for artists. So whether you are an emerging artist just starting out, or a seasoned professional looking to navigate that digital landscape, Remember that your creativity and self-expression, they have the power to inspire and uplift others. So keep creating, keep pushing those boundaries, and keep making the world a more beautiful and meaningful place with your artwork. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.